Yes, it works. Thanks. Thanks for the nice introduction. For those of you that don't know Heistorsis from before, I would ju just like to briefly mention that it's a spin-off company from the Institute for Energy Technology in Norway. And uh, as early as in 1951, Norway was actually operating a nuclear power plant as, numbers, as the country number six in the world after US, England, France, Soviet Union and Canada. And this is, was thanks to the physicist that you recognize on the left side of this picture, Gunnar Anders. The other guy is Albert Einstein, if you didn't recognize him. So metal hydrides, it's hard to understand if you don't have the right piece of equipment. But with such a nuclear reactor that was decided in Norway we should not do nuclear power, but we could use it for, as a neutral source to see how hydrogen fits into metrohydrides. And this led to IFE being the, uh, lead, one of the lead uh, world companies or institutes in the world when it comes to metal hydro technology. So we are based on the shoulders of these. We do uh, metal hydro based uh, hydrogen storage and compression systems since 2005 and we are located at the institute. Our core competence is of course then the metal hydrides. Their compositions, how to synthesize them, how to make these something that we can use in applications, not just for science and, uh, and that background. We also have a lot of uh, experience when it comes to comprehension and production of development of uh, systems and system integration. How does it work? A metal hydride is a combination of a metal and a hydra uh, uh, and hydrogen. And the hydrogen is a, is a lattice structure. So the hydrogen is split on the surface of such a gray uh, particle and it forms atomic hydrogen that goes into this uh, lattice structure that you can see here on this cartoon. Basically what it means is that you can pack your hydrogen very, very dense through this technology. Denser than you can do with the liquid hydrogen. So when it comes to compression, what do we do? We need to cool down the unit because when the hydrogen enters upon the uh, metal and forms the metal hydride, it is an exotherm reaction. So heat will be given and this is something that we don't like at this point. We need to take that away. When we have the hydrogen inside the lattice structure, we heat up the unit. The hydrogen comes out again, but at a much higher pressure than when we absorbed it. This is actually the basics when it comes to compression. Do the cycling of the heating and cooling. And if you look at this graph, we have this blue line at the bottom. It's almost flat. It means that we can take a lot of hydrogen into our uh, vessel at a low pressure, but we have to cool it all the time. And this is done then from D to A in this uh, scheme. Next is that we need to heat it up. We go from A to B on the graph. We take all this hydrogen up to a higher pressure level. And then following the red curve, almost linear at a much higher pressure than we started, we get the hydrogen out. Following 
B to C. And then we are back again. We need to cool down the system, take it down to, from C to D. And we can start with another batch compressing more hydrogen. And this is how the system looks like. For several years we've been here and we have uh, talked about there's no footprint for this kind of compressor. And finally, when we were able to deliver our first compressor and we were going there for commissioning, we actually realized we had, it was very right because the customer put it on the wall. There's no footprint. It's, it's, it's a silent thing. There's no moving parts. There's some valves that will change positions in order to select whether it's hot or cold water going into it. It gives no vibrations. So obviously, if you're going to live in, your, in the same house as your compressor, you don't like those kind of sounds and things. And it's uh, delivering pure hydrogen. No, no way that we can add anything here. So what can, we, what can we use this for? For instance, if you have a standalone application, you have some renewable input. You use that renewable input as directly as you can, of course. That's the most efficient way to do it. And then you need some heat, some hot water probably, also for your uh, household or application. But you also need to store your energy. And you can do that for a shorter period of time. You can use batteries. But if you're going to use it uh, in a larger scale, for instance, seasonal storage, you should go the way by hydrogen. And then you can use this compressor. If you go visit uh, Nelson Energy, just next to uh, the public forum, you will meet Hans Olof. And he actually did this in his house. He's using our compressor system. He's based his house on solar... This is an off-grid house. He based his uh, house on, on solar input and also uh, geothermal energy. The house is uh, very nice. There's no lack of everything, anything. All power, all year round, is fed based on the sun and the geothermal. He got a battery electric vehicle and he also planned a fuel cell electric vehicle to be powered by his house. If you go to a larger scale, then you have the possibility to use, uh, if you have some industry that needs hydrogen, the hydrogen should probably then be fed directly from the electrolyzer for the industrial process at all time. But however, you, you will also need to do maintenance on this, or it could be some, uh, some uh, utility power uh, outage or something. So you need some backup system. So if you sip off a small hydrogen stream that you, you put on, on some uh, pressure vessels, you have some uh, backup for your hydrogen that you can use in those cases. You will also have an industry probably here that can give you the thermal energy needed for the compressor. And you can have compression for free and with very low maintenance. Recently, we also started to look into the possibility of using uh, metal hydrides only for, for pure storage. And we formed such a building unit, like you see here in the picture. This is uh, a quite neat solution. Uh, it can be configured differently, of course. This is just, uh, just to show an option. It is, uh, it is heavy. So, of course, this is something that you, you, you place on site. And, and, and you don't uh, ship it around too much after that. 
However, here you can then store hydrogen at a low pressure. If you have an uh, electrolyzer that gives you, let's say, 20 or 30 bar, you can take it directly into this metal hydride storage. You don't need a compressor solution. If you do this, and if you like to uh, shuffle the, uh, this a bit around because you, you, this geometry doesn't fit on these things, it's no, no problem. But here we show one rack that contains 21 kilo of hydrogen or a capacity of 700 kilowatt hour as an electric, uh, electric uh, quantity. And you can use this as a building block, stack it uh, next to each other or on top of each other to build the storage that you need. And this is actually, you uh, know, we are, uh, I, I, I don't want to show a picture because we are only in no negotiations, but this is something that we are uh, currently doing for a Norwegian partner. So, just to show you, where we are today, we have gone through a lot of uh, development, proof of concept, durability tests, redesign, uh, and also then now to the pure <coughs> product productification. So we are from this year ready for delivery. And this is actually the very first compressor system that we delivered. So, if you like to have a hands-on experience with such a system, you can come and visit us at Booth B60. Thank you very much, Dr. John Erickson. Are there any questions from the audience? <coughs> okay, so you just mentioned you're at the moment uh, delivery status. Um, you're uh, based in the, um, Denmark? Uh, Norway. Norway. <laughs> so, um, are you mainly delivering to Norway at the moment, or is it where is your target group at the moment? No, uh, at the moment we are mainly actually delivering to Sweden. Uh, we are a Norwegian company. Uh, we have uh, re relations to Denmark. Yes, uh, we have production facilities in Sweden. So we are kind of Scandinavian, I would say. Yes, and uh, the two pictures I showed here, it's uh, both from Sweden. The first one with the electrolyzer hanging on the wall is uh, actually uh, Skellefteå Kraft uh, in Sweden, a utility company that actually also think about going uh, off-grid. Strange, <laughs> but that's the way it is. Thank you very much. So if you have further questions or want to discuss the topic, please go to booth 60 in this direction. Thank you very much, Dr. John Erickson.